If you're interested in learning about cybersecurity, IT, security compliance, risk management framework, how to advertise yourself in IT and cybersecurity, check us out on ConvoCourses.com. We've got free courses. It's free to sign up, and I'm always releasing new stuff on there. All right, let's go. So let's keep going here. And then what we'll do is I will show you how you can document separation of duties. But for now, let's talk about the next item, which is least privilege. Least privilege is this one right here, AC6, least privilege. Let's go into this one and talk about least privilege. If you don't have any context here, if you just jumped on this live and you're like, man, what's, what is he talking about? What is NIST Special Publication 853 Rev 4? What is that? What's going on? If you're interested in actually knowing more about this field, this path, um, what I'm talking about is security compliance. Security compliance specifically with NIST. And I have a whole course, if you're interested, it's called Risk Management Framework Information System Security Officer Foundations. And it talks about how to do security compliance using the NIST standard. But then I have another one coming out real soon that talks about how to document everything I'm talking about to you. Now I give you context of how it all works. I'll break down different documentation. And I'm going to go through all the families or most of the families. I don't know if I'm going to cover all of them, but I'm going to cover most of the families in that course that's coming out soon. So go ahead and check that out on combocourses.com if you're interested. All right, let's keep going here. Least privilege. Now, this one right here, this one's near and dear to my heart. This is something that many different organizations, I would say most, most of the organizations that I've ever worked for violate this one. The reason why is because we as human beings are lazy. We want to do the least amount of work for the greatest amount of impact. <laughs> so if there's a way that we can give somebody, if we have a really smart system administrator in our organization and we want that server fixed. This guy, who's really the smartest guy in the organization, does Cisco routers, but we also want him, we just start giving this person all of these different privileges that they don't need, right? That's one of the things that happens with least privilege. Another thing we'll do, especially in large organizations, is we'll have, like, say, a thousand different users, right? And the users don't really need, they only need to access their workstation. But they keep coming up with these different things that happen. Like maybe they have this annoying pop-up and we restricted their laptop to where they can only do their job. They can, but they got this annoying pop-up. So every time they get this pop-up, they contact the help desk and they're like, hey, could you guys fix this pop-up? After a while, the help desk is like, okay, forget it. Let's just give these guys local admin privileges so that they can fix it themselves. And then they tell them how to fix it, right? And, and they're like, well, it's just local admin privileges. What could possibly go wrong with that? A lot can go wrong with that. <laughs> That's another violation of least privilege. What is least privilege? Let's talk about it. The organization employs a principle of least privilege, allowing only authorized access for users which are necessary to accomplish the assigned tasks in accordance with the organization's mission or business function. What did I just say? So what I'm saying is, you only give people the privileges that they need to do their job. Full stop. That's it. That's what least privilege is. And like I said, the reason why this is violated is because we're lazy. We want to do the easiest thing possible. And it's harder to give people limited privileges when every time they need extra privileges, they have to go and ask. They got to play mother may I to go get access to the logs or this pop up is keeps popping up. I want to stop it. You know, so least privileges, it's one of the biggest issues that I've seen in organizations. Let's look at the supplemental guidance here. The organization employs least privilege for specific duties and information systems. The principle of least privilege is also applied to information system processes, ensuring that the processes operate at a privilege level no higher than necessary to accomplish the required organizational or business mission or business function. You only give the privileges that are needed to do the job, period. So runaway privileges is one of the biggest issues in most organizations. I've in 90% of the organizations I've been to, this is the biggest violation. And this is the one that gets most people in trouble. 
let's talk about how to document these two controls that we just talked about here. What I'm going to do is bring up, I'm going to bring up a couple things. If you're doing risk management framework, documentation is the name of the game. The reason why we document so much, and I know I talked to some of my system administrators who are very technical, they're their head is always, you know, deep, deep in the weeds on how to implement these systems or set up a new Linux server or whatever, right? So they don't have time for documentation a lot of times, or at least that's how they feel. But the reason why documentation is so important to somebody who does what I do, which is security compliance, is that if we don't have documentation, a lot of times we don't know who has privileges and who don't. We don't know what privileges are needed here or to this person or what role we even have. Sometimes organizations are so large that they don't even know what roles they have and they don't even know what roles have what privileges and the reason why is because they didn't document it. So you have to make sure that you document and that's why it's, it's so important. One of the biggest reasons why we have to document is having a security baseline. If you don't document, you don't know what baseline you have and a lot of times that's the reason why you have a legacy system out there on Windows 2003 or Windows 2000 or something like that in the year 2020. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And then there's no support for that system. And so it's out there and you didn't even know it was out there. So that's why you have to document, document, document.